This is what it means to be an eight dimensional being, to build the structures which connect all the souls that are creating all the waters in the universe to infinity and beyond. <laughs> to me, spiders are clearly eight dimensional beings in their structure alone. So since you're tapping into the root of the symmetry, I'd like to give you a look at the anatomy of an arachnid. Doing this will teach us a lot about how their bodies physically mimic the metaphysical structure of the soul and thus how all souls operate when creating life together. First off, let's take a look at the number eight. Let's listen to the number eight. Eight, 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 late, great, fate, state, plate, mate, hate. So many words to rhyme with eight, my guy. Clearly, it's quite a frequent vibration. So let's take a look at the geometry of eight before we get lost in the details of this language. Eight, 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 eight looks like two circles on top of each other. It also looks like the infinity symbol flipped vertically, which is no coincidence. 8 and infinity are closely linked, as we've already covered, considering 8 represents the soul, and the soul is infinite. This is why the 8 and infinity are basically symbolized by two circles joining together. One circle is the whole masculine side of the spirit, and the other circle is the whole feminine side of the spirit. They come together to generate an infinitely individual and invisible perspective on the universe this is a soul soul one circle is that individual spirits alone realm and the other circle is that individual spirits all one realm right here we can see the architecture of the arachnid the highest vibration is freedom and the most infinite imagination is no imagination at all. <sighs> this is what nothingness is. True bliss. True detachment. This is why we fast over here with Tahuti, straight up. True freedom is to be attached to nothing at all, right? If you're going to attach to anything, attach to your spirit, no thing. That is the infinite, your individual section of the all. Can somebody tell me how many times you can divide up infinity until it's finite? Huh? What, what's a fraction? Someone please like, what's the, what's the smallest fraction of, a, of infinity? No. Oh, snap. That's right. That's impossible. The spirit is infinite. So no matter how small or big you go, it will be all there is. Because everything you see must come out of no thing, one way or another. Everything exists within zero. This is why zero is a circle. A circle is the closest possible shape we have to explain what spirit looks like. Really, what it moves like, which then creates its body. Hence, why all rhythms, all mappings of vibration, are cyclical. Chi is cyclical, hence Bakwa and Tai Chi being all about the circle. So, the highest feeling in the universe is no feeling at all. Complete infinite freedom of being, true spirit, is detachment. The desire to express one's infinite individuality becomes the catalyst for creation in all realms and realities. This is what the emotion called love really comes down to, the desire to express one's individuality. Anytime someone claims to love something they can see, it's always because it's fulfilling an unseen desire of theirs. Anytime someone then claims to hate something they can see, it's thus because it's creating more desire inside of them instead of fulfilling it. This is where we get the whole vibe 
of religious people violently oppressing and hindering other spirits freedom of expression time and time again it's because those religious spirits see things in the environment that create desire inside of themselves and they hate that a lot <laughs> because desire separates the body from spirit and they don't want to take responsibility for their own body <sighs> for whatever reason so this becomes why many cultures of religious men force the women to cover up their bodies and thus the natural expression of their spirits because these religious men are so mentally weak they feel fearful and utterly powerless in the face of a beautiful woman with bodacious buns because these religious men hate their internal women their internal feelings they project that hate onto women in their external environment because they perceive them as creating desires inside of themselves that they cannot control this my friends is why love and hate are two sides of the same coin that power all of life desire de fire desire is the best word to describe the raw pure emotion that all life is created from love is the positive side of desire hate is the negative side of desire we love things that support our freedom of expression and hate things that hinder our freedom of expression this desire this defire this defire of desire this is the alone realm the masculine side of the soul on the spider this is the head or the cephalorax here most spiders have eight to twelve eyes some have none but almost all of them have eight legs plus two little mini legs called pedipalps which allow them to weave their webs <laughs> look at them bro like <laughs> this is very cute and creepy but what special creepers they are <laughs> creatures creeper creatures wonderful with a general standard of eight eyes and eight legs bro look at those petty palps wow that's fire all right hey i love spiders it seems to be clear that the eight dimensional essence is innate in the structure of a spider's body honestly is it then a coincidence that spiders widely have eight eyes or is it because they are designed to quote unquote see over the eight dimensions with which they are tasked creating and protecting well life surely isn't black and white but we can learn a lot about the nature of eyes and their relation to the fiery alone realm in the anatomy of our arachnid so the head the cephalorax of a spider correlates to the frequency of the soul this is the origin and main operating brain space of consciousness because nothingness creates fire to express its desire to live this is why your fire your visions are invisible it's also important to note that live is the ego and love is the spirit so this is how nothingness is true love and when you live in love you're living from a spiritual space because you are in the ego so live with the i notice how it's a one whereas love is an o or really a zero all right so zero and one spirit finds a way for language we're speaking it because it resonates it doesn't matter what you see no one else can see it but you no one else perceives life the same way you do because no one has your fire no one has your perception because your awareness is your projection you can only see what you want to see this is why you can show someone proof that they believe in a lie but if they don't want to see that proof 
then they're not going to perceive that proof, my guy. If you try to force them to perceive it, their fire of desire to stay comfortable in the way they live will start to blaze higher and higher. And they may get so angry that they leave, attack you, destroy your proof, or burn the environment in whatever way necessary to keep their spirit ego comfortable. Your visions are your passions, and although no one can see them but yourself, they make you hot, don't they? Your invisible dreams and visions motivate you to want to make them visible, don't they? Yeah, you know, your dreams, your, don't your dreams make you a little steamy? If you don't have passions that make you passionate, hmm... I think there's some meditating to do. I would suggest fasting, high key. This is how the spirit uses fire to create life. I don't know how you would be creating life if you're not passionate about your dreams and it doesn't make you steamy. This is what it means to be steamy. It means that your fire is hitting your water and now that air is communicating. This is how we make life. This is why your imagination is also always alone because it is fire. It can't actually touch water. It's too hot and unique to be a part of anything else. So uh, with quantum physics, right? Everything is suspended in space. Nothing can touch. We only feel like things touch. Boom. It's right there. We have space. We have the feeling like things are touching. And then we have the thing that we think that we're touching, a.k.a. light, darkness and spirit consciousness subconsciousness and unconsciousness but back to the imagination this is what an eye is all about when we think about dreams and imaginations it is about perceiving its own projection hence why you can only see your imagination until you decide to communicate it for others to and even then no one can actually see what you see. Physically, eyes can only perceive light that matches the frequency of its own projected light body in all realms and realities. Therefore, the eyes that are created because a spirit desires to see its imagination, which no one else can see until it communicates it, are multidimensional, and really everything would be an eye at this point. Communication and creation are then being the same thing cosmically. Hence, art, air, boom, externalization of spirit. We've got life, baby. Welcome to the symmetry. Now that we have a greater understanding as to why the conscious awareness in animals mainly correlates to the brain to which their eyes are attached, let's drop down from the dom to the sub from the frequency to the vibration, from the fiery alone realm into the watery all one realm, AKA the cosmic womb of feminine creation. On the spider, this is the abdomen where most of its organs are located. The all one realm is created by spirits who want to connect with other spirits, by spirits who don't want to be alone in their imaginations anymore. So, they cool their fire down into water. They start reflecting instead of projecting. This reflection, collectively, creates the body of water that subconsciously connects all the spirits who desire to create life together. Once all these spirits are connected by their deep dark blackness, they can bring their vividly hot imaginations in contact with their watery feelings to connect to others to create air, chi. This chi air is the main essence of communication, which is what all the organ structures that are solidified from the chi must do constantly in order for the whole body to operate properly. I mean constantly. There is not one point 
in your body in the body of a spider where your organs are not communicating with each other to keep the structure functioning if your body stops communicating inside of yourself then you're not communicating with us aka you're dead this is how we can see that communication at its core is the chi from which the structures in both our bodies and a spotter's body then solidify to stabilize the way that the spider desires to communicate inside of itself. This is how we form all of our organs. Physically, this looks like how the organs interact inside of the organism. Spiritually, it shows that all simulations are created by a multitude of spirits communicating their imaginations and feelings through interconnected structures. Inside the abdomen of the spider, we have the entire digestive system, which is already a lot of intricate and interconnected tubes and stuff. We've got the lungs, allowing it to stay connected and inspired to the realm it chose to be in. We've got the reproductive system, allowing it to create life and multiply. We've got the silk glands, allowing it to create the very soul structures we're talking about here. And of course, the heart and major blood vessels are nestled right in the watery abdomen. See, the heart is the main brain in all realms and realities. The head brain that is attached to our eyes shows our desire to express our individuality in life. But as we know, desire kills life when it's lost in its own ideas. This is why we consciously operate and observe from our higher head brain. It spiritually reflects our desire to go from being no thing to being alone. This is why the eyes and left head brain correlate to the fiery frequency that is the masculine and dominant side of your spirit. But because life is not possible when we are always in control, we have the balance, which is our body brain or gut brain you know those times where you felt like you should listen to your gut most spirits and bodies who don't listen to their gut almost always end up regretting it later even if the feeling you do get in your gut contradicts what you consciously desire to do you'll find that you'll be much happier in the long run if you listen to your gut brain in that moment instead of your conscious desires I'm sure we could throw examples of this playing out in life for years and years and years and years and years. Whether it's a situation where you want to steal from a store, but your gut hits you with a feeling that you shouldn't, or you want to bust in that girl raw, but your gut tells you no, because it's important for the overall freedom of your spirit that you listen to those gut feelings when you're chasing your dreams, so to speak because they're your body using emotions to communicate with your subconscious in a way that it can't with your consciousness. And once it communicates with your subconscious, because that is creating your conscious, hopefully your conscious, if it meditates, will perceive it. So the gut brain correlates to the watery vibration that is the feminine and subordinate side of your spirit the demon to the desire your feelings are there to serve the intention of your spirit ideally so even when you don't want to hear what your loud ass feelings have to say about your dreams not listening to those nagging bitchy feelings may very well result in an early death of your spirit's body this is how darkness fuels the light if you don't listen to emotions, all of them, because they're all valid, and use them to fuel your dreams, then you're not actually going to be able to build or live a sustainable life at all. This is doubly why mastering your feelings and making them your loyal, subordinate bitch, aka female dog, is incredibly important to actually bringing your spirit's invisible visions to manifest 
to this visible earth. That way, you're not drowning in a storm of your own making. You can keep your vibe high and walk on water like Jesus as a true spiritual individual. See, emotions are too chaotic to be creative on their own. Without an intention to direct its infinite emotional fluid into, it will stay as no thing. This is why men and women, thoughts and feelings, fire and water, need each other in order to create and communicate anything. Hence, why the heart is the main brain. The heart is where the magic truly happens. The heart, universally, can be called the hearth, just add an extra H on the end, because it's where the heat is made. By the way, H is the eighth letter in the alphabet. H, eight, hate, great, eight, eight, H, eight, hate, great. Yeah, the spirit finds a way. Regardless, the heart, the hearth, is where heat is made, for it's where life is made. Right here, where the alone realm and the all one realm meet. Temperature is just the meeting of two different stars. This is how a soul creates its own temperature. It unites two stars, so to speak. These stars being lights. The light that represents itself when it's alone and the light that represents itself when it's all one. This is the true source of any and all creations. Energy, inner chi generated from the inner G. How does the heart constantly pump the blood your body needs to live? Science definitely can't give you a true answer if they're still focused on the Luciferian white supremacist agenda of making you lost in whatever logic they have. If it's not as simple as because your spirit feels like animating the body that it made, then it's lostness. Literally, your heart is proof that you can create energy from the vibration, from the intention, from nothing. Your heart is the energy which is constantly vibrating with the intention your spirit has to experience its nothingness in this body. This is a spiritual reason why the heart is the main brain, the true seat of the soul. Why isn't our awareness in our hearts? Why aren't our eyes attached to our hearts? Well, one, everything is an eye, as I did say earlier. Something simultaneously projecting and receiving. Chakras and organs are all eyes. Of course, we're not so consciously aware of what we see because we desire to be aware of the images we're creating to express ourselves. Hence, lost in light. This is why we operate from the head brain, as do spiders. We aspire to create life and control the life inside of our body to create life outside of our body in a more conscious way. This is what all spirits and bodies are doing on some level. Spiders are special, as we're discovering, because their bodies are created by spirits who deeply resonate with creating the structures that connect all realms and realities. These web structures are the metallic earth meant to stabilize the way watery souls communicate with each other. This then logically turns into our concept of time. We can learn more about how the masculine fire desires to have control over life in the anatomy of our soulful spiders when we take note of where the nervous system is located. Here, we can see that the control center of the spider correlates much more to the alone realm, which then extends to the legs of the spider being attached to the cephalothorax instead of the abdomen. It's all about control. Specifically, controlling the way its internal body communicates with external bodies. Now, here's the thing. 
When we know that the heart is the first organ communicated to the external world, it's important to know that the legs are thus an extension of this heart's desire to connect and communicate with its environment. This is why, if we simply draw a figure eight spider, it seems much more natural to have the legs extending from the middle versus the top, you feel me? But let me not project. Which looks more natural to you? What's funny is that the legs coming from the middle looks more friendly and inviting to me, whereas the legs coming from the top looks much more sinister and intimidating. It's kind of like this difference of leg placement alone communicates the desires of this body. The left one is balanced in the control that it desires, whereas the other is much more masculine in its desire to control. And definitely like it looks cooler. I would use it for the back design of a Spider-Man costume for sure. Uh, the one on the left would be a Spider-Boy costume, like li literally. Uh, the spider on the left looks like spider boy. The spider on the right looks like spider man. And then honestly, let's bring in the legs on the bottom. Now that's, would that not be spider woman? It's kind of interesting. Hmm. How do you feel about the spider with the legs at the bottom? For physical reality, it completely makes sense that the spider would go for a more fiery and conscious setup for its legs. Anatomically, the spider desires to use its legs hyperconsciously because creating these intricate web structures is deep Virgoian work. This is where the abdomen, its watery all one gut realm, functions to serve this spider desire by actually producing the very silk it needs to create its structure. The spider's conscious mind is not constantly focusing on internally synthesizing the silk it needs. That's the job of the subconscious mind. The conscious mind's job is to use its nervous system to activate its spinnerets and start pulling the strands of silk out of its bum. Here, we have the full manifestation of how spirit turns to fire, turns to water, turns to air, turns to earth, turns to metal even, if we consider the web as such. To clarify, the spirit is formless, individual, and truly infinite. It is no thing in particular. It is unimaginable infinity, truly. Fire, then, is the imagination of that individual spirit. The moment we use our infinite nothingness, to create a vision that we feel expresses our individuality. We've transitioned from no thing into fire, from spirit into ego. Hence, while your ego is only concerned with achieving its dreams and fulfilling its own desires. This is why spiders, humans, and most animals consciously operate from the higher brain they have eyes attached to. Spiritually, that spirit mainly made a body with eyes so it can look at itself, aka make its visions reality in whatever realm it's in. From here, because life is not created inside pure desire, the fire must balance and cool itself down from a frequency into a vibration. To do this, the spirit must create an equally opposite and harmonious flame to balance out all the desires and intentions of the first flame. This is where we get the creation of the soul, the mind, and the spirit's infinitely individual perspective, intention and feeling, heaven and hell. The fiery heaven is what our spirits want to see and the watery hell is what our spirits don't want to see. Anytime you meet someone who is scared of darkness, it's because they're scared of their individual emotions about their individual ideas. Fire is to be alone. Water is to be all one, meaning that life is not created in fire, but water. Life is not created in aloneness, 
but all oneness. Life is not created in individuality, but collectivism. So any fire desires you have represent your individuality, and all your watery emotions about that represent how you collect and connect your imagination with yourself and others. Considering all higher thoughts are only created out of focusing on one emotion, this is why the spirit and thus all of reality is naturally dual in this way. The interplay between the visible and invisible, all meant to express nothingness. Everything in existence vibrates because everything is energetically motional. Once a spirit combines its fire and water, its imagination and feelings, it creates air which results in the chi communication that vibrates all earth in existence. Earth being each spirit's individual perspective on how they desire to communicate with the universe, aka the body they create. The bodies of spiders literally create metal beyond earth. See, all organisms use their fire brain to consume life which they then use their water brain to connect the nutrients to their body, allowing for a continued chi-air communication, while the food is converted into earth, aka manure, or poo, or kaka, or shaista. See how the universal spirit animates its natural processes through its creations? It's pretty cool. Now, because spiders are tasked with building the structures that connect all souls through space and time, they don't just poop out earth like the rest of us. Their vision is so hot, it allows them to turn their special silky water fluids into solid and then metallic string. Metallic string that is so durable, it's five times stronger than the standard steel metal created through the Industrial Revolution. To this day, industrialists and scientists have been steady obsessed with using their artificial intelligence to mimic the spider's natural intelligence. We can literally see their industrial desire for creating artificial spider silk in the world's favorite wall crawler, Spidey Man. According to many sources online, numerous scientific circles have created their own versions of synthetic spider silk all with different innovative intentions, such as protecting oneself from weapons, because that's literally all the colonial military complex cares about, killing and consuming nature so that they can create better technology to kill and consume more nature. It's so limiting, but hey, they clearly have their intentions figured out, colonize the sea, and they need to mimic nature to do it. Hence, why in Marvel Comics, Captain America's prized defensive weapon is made out of stolen African metal. Clearly, everything that makes Captain America a war symbol meant to inspire the world, his whole iconic shield that everyone seems to worship, was literally created from colonizing and stealing vibranium from Wakanda. It's literally like Marvel has to say that everything which makes America great was stolen from Africa and given a whitewashing paint job. Um, but hey, the truth resonates. The truth makes money. Clearly, nature's intelligent design is only possible because all these infinite individuals agreeing to connect their imaginations in a grounded way, allowing us to communicate with each other in ways that we never could if we only ever projected our individuality at each other. As spirits, we create nature as the arena where it's possible for us to be alone together and thus project our individuality at each other. This is what it means to get fiery and wage war. War from a fiery place will result in death. 
fire turns earth into metal, which is then used to separate earth from water, aka bodies from souls. This is why metal is quite rare and really only gets created when a spirit consciously uses its imagination to convert a structure that benefits the collective into a structure that benefits solely itself. That's what it means to use fire to turn earth into metal. Wood is the element created from combining water and earth. Spiders are super special because metaphysically, they're creating metal to connect to life, not separate it. Physically, yes, their webs totally serve as a way to catch and eat bugs because the spider's got to eat, okay? Hey, look, that's just how it be. Keeping souls connected through time and space, that's, that's deep work. You can't really just be doing that and not expect to not be smashing on some critters. Even deeper than that, though, it could be argued that the spider is smashing on those critters, that the spider using its web to catch bugs in order to separate souls from bodies is actually not separating souls from bodies. Spiders using their nets to catch and eat bugs could actually be a huge part of keeping souls connected to their bodies, despite what it looks like when they do eat a bug. Spiders are overall predators, for sure. They consume prey like ants, roaches, flies, moths, and yes, those horribly holistic demons that we call mosquitoes. I really do hate insects, like, so much, honestly, truthfully. I love nature, but I hate insects <laughs> with a fiery passion. I, I truly, I, I cannot deny that. Um, if I could just have all of nature with no little critters and be outside and just live outside all the time, like, that would be it. <laughs> That'd be it for me. I'd be down. But, and it's truly, it's not personal. I definitely love insects for who they are i love them for the role they play in infinity but i just hate the way that i feel around them now okay this is where hate makes us great so personally you know i could communicate inside of myself to build an aura to repel bugs and i'm working on that in general though bugs are pretty whack and most people in my life also don't like bugs and humans in general don't like bugs because biologically bugs won't leave us alone um even though we're also the invaders so that's just how it is in nature or well, luckily though we're not in nature we're man we're way higher than nature of course that's why we live in structures that repel the things we hate like bugs humans hate bugs so much and i'm sure you like me when you would see one in your house you would kill it and that's what i was on growing up 100 percent um even now like i'm not ever gonna go out of my way to kill a bug if i see one out in nature never ever no that's wild but if you are inside of my structure then you're about to have to get liberated from your puny existence <laughs> but if i see a spider and even growing up when I was younger, if I ever saw a spider, like even when I'm like five, if there's like any kind of other bug, I would kill that thing. A spider though, I would truly ponder. I'd look upon it. I would pontificate. Whether this was an arachnid here to help me or hinder me. And since I love Spider-Man so much as well, uh, it really did feel like I was actually supposed to connect with spiders in a deeper way. And usually I would let them live after communicating with it, literally. I would communicate with bugs, just not the same way as spiders. And logically, the reason was always, you're going to be protecting us from the real pests. So, shout out to you, bro. And that spider would be like, thanks, bro. I got to eat, bro. Absolutely. See, spiders are essential for keeping the insect world and thus the human world in a natural equilibrium. Spiders eat any and all insects, including themselves.
meaning uh, they give no flips about uh, true ego. Like they're not egotistic at all. They are just about the balance. If things get territorial, they will eat themselves. This definitely looks gruesome, but on a natural universal perspective, this is spiders really keeping their own population in check as well as other insects. That's how much they care about you. Truly noble. Gotta respect the balance. Not only do spiders eat bugs in order to benefit the larger animal population, but the plant life as well. Because spiders eat predators of plants like aphids, mites, weevils, caterpillars, leaf miners, which are the ravenously hungry larvae of moth, beetle, and other various things, and many, many other insects as well, plants can actually flourish in a way that then allows mammals, like humans, to flourish. Without plants, we wouldn't have the oxygen, the air, the atmosphere that's possible for us to breathe and thus stay connected to the simulation. So, truly, genuinely, deeply from all sides of my heart, <laughs> just the straight bottom, the straight top, everything in between, shout out spiders. Because if they were not creating the structures to connect all souls in the universe, then they wouldn't be able to protect the plants that allow our souls to connect in this reality. It's pretty trippy. About as trippy as a beautiful design spiders be weaving every day, every hour, every minute, every second. Whoa. Second being second because what came first? The feeling. You. This has been your friendly neighborhood symmetry, also known as Tehuti Trismegistus. I hope this video has generated a greater awareness and appreciation not only for the important role that spiders play in connecting souls through space, thus creating time, but also for maintaining natural balance with their eight dimensional responsibilities. Infinite power with all those responsibilities. Truly the lessons of a spider. Main. Gang gang.